Good evening, everybody, and what a wonderful show to celebrate Memorial Day. Yep. And for all of you who have stories about those in your life or, you know, your families and relatives, if there's a brief way to, like, I want to thank my Uncle Tony, or I want to, you know, just... Alan will read as many as he can. I think that this is an incredible holiday. And for Alan and I, having spent so much time entertaining U.S. soldiers, um, this is particularly poignant for all of us, especially in these confusing times right now. Never, more than ever, have we experienced um, such a chaotic time in our lives and you know I never talk about politics and, and never will but um, uh, right now I just want us to all band together today in this hour to be grateful to all those who came before us to keep us free and freedom is everything so here we go it's America's biggest virtual cocktail party and I hope you all have your tequilas ready. Let's all give a toast. Al, how about you? Where's your tequila? Al? Okay, yeah, I haven't poured my tequila oh, yet. Oh, no, we can't start without Al. Okay. Okay, hold your glasses. I know they're heavy. Okay. We'll wait for Al. <laughs> okay. It's a beautiful day in the desert. It's only 100, which is not bad. It's not bad, desert weather. This morning, I got up at 6 a.m. And I walked out our bedroom door and I said, oh my God, what a beautiful morning. It was, I, you know, heaven couldn't be any better than that. All right, you ready to toast all of us, Al? Okay. Okay. All right, here comes Al with his glass in front of the camera. Okay. I love you. Happy Memorial Day. Love you. God bless America. Yeah, you betcha. You know, my dad was in World War I, mm. and he was wounded twice wow. in, his, yeah. in his chest. And when I was a little boy, uh, you know, they didn't, they, he was in the, in the field, and they dug out the, uh, the, the bullets with a spoon and no anesthetic. On the battlefield? I don't know where. With a spoon. And, no and uh, so under the hair on his chest, he had this hole. And when I was a little boy and he would hold me, I loved sticking my finger in the hole. <laughs> <laughs> but that was tough. World War I was really tough. They still have no idea how many, how many people were lost. Yeah. Well, to your dad. Yeah. Your dad. To all of, all of them. Well, we're going to do one at a time today. So okay. To your dad. Okay. Here's when to I my met dad. dad. He was old. Yeah. Alan, when Alan met his dad, his dad was old. Your dad died at what? Ninety six. Ninety six. And um, he's one of the most honorable. And I heard you describe him today as pure, and that's true. Pure, just so pure. Caroline, was your father in the service? Yes, he was. Right at the end of World War Two. Tell Tell me about his experience. He um, was in the Navy, and he was 18 years old, and he, right at the end of World War II, he, he helped with the cleanup afterwards, and uh, it was a profound experience for him. I bet. Can you imagine how her, uh, Caroline's father was one of the most handsome men I've ever seen, you know? When Italians are good looking, they're good looking like nobody else. Can you imagine what your dad looked like in his... Um, Dress whites. Oh my God. That well, you know what? What's funny? He gained so much weight because, um, you know, they got three meals a day, and he said, you know, when I grew up in, in my home, we, we didn't, you know, we didn't eat. You, you, you kind of held back. And he yeah. said that he actually gained weight during the service, so he came home at <laughs> twenty pounds. <laughs> well, um, uh, several years ago, Alan and I. Um, decided to do an interesting kind of trip to Europe. And we wanted to go see uh, 
points of interest from World War II because we, our generation, grew up hearing about it. And one of the places we went to that I highly recommend everybody in their lifetime go to is uh, Normandy, Omaha Beach. Steven Spielberg did that incredible uh, movie. Uh, what was the name of the movie that Spielberg did? Brothers uh, something? Was that Band of Brothers or? I don't think that was it, but that was an, an, another incredible one. So I didn't know I was going to be so moved, but I do recall my Uncle Ralph and my Uncle Dave, who were my two favorite uncles, um, and they were uh, 18 and 19 years old. And um, when you stood up on the cliff overlooking Omaha Beach, from the vantage point of the enemy. The German bunkers were still there. And the German bunkers were still there. Uh, you realize that it was a turkey shoot, that um, it was just pure luck if you lived. And I think of all those young boys who that moment they jumped into those uh, rickety boats that were taking them onto the beach, that it was just pure luck it was intervention by god you're going to be saved you're not you are you're not and um, i thought so much about these two uncles of mine who were you know my uncle ralph was a butcher and he's one of those guys when you're a little kid he always grabs your nose and puts his thumb in between the two first fingers and said oh i just pulled off your nose go, no 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 <laughs> <laughs> uncle ralph pulled off my nose and um Wow, did our fathers and uncles make sacrifice. Yeah. And that's what today is about. Well, here's one. Yeah. From Vicki Grady. Okay. One of mine. My dad had eight brothers all serving. Mm. How's that? Mm. Mm. Eight brothers? Mm. Thank your brothers. Yeah. And your father for their service. God bless them. And I hope um, they're all still alive, but if, if not, may they rest in peace. They done good. My father, who I've told you about um, and written about many times, was a, a desperate alcoholic. And um, alcoholics don't want to be alcoholics, by the way. You either you've got the demon or you don't. And uh, especially back then, they, there weren't rehab houses, there weren't dry out places, you just had what they called the curse. It was interesting with the word the curse was used. The curse women used in that era for the right, periods. Right, right. My mother's got the curse this right. week. And um, so uh, uh, my dad, when he'd be very, very drunk, that's when it would come out. And he was a merchant marine in World War II. And um, he said, he, he said, I had the lousiest job in the service. I said many times when I was a little girl, what was your da job, Daddy? He said, when the, the bottom of the hull goes like this, he was right down there, and that's where they loaded on the bombs. And he said, I always knew if our, our ship got hit, there's no way out. And he said, I went to bed every night not knowing is tonight the night, is tomorrow the night. Imagine the toll that takes on your psyche, the stress of not knowing from day to day. Is this the day that the blade's gonna pass over my head or not? And um, when I uh, did serious work on forgiving my father for the way alcohol made him uh, behave, I often threw into the equation of um, that uh, stress of being on in that terrible position. I remember right down here, he was right in there. He was a little guy. And so this little guy down there, there's no way out. I spent a lot of time on those ships, both Alan and I have because of our work with the USO. I, whenever I've had to go many layers deep in a ship, I don't like it. I get down there and when you reach the, the point where there are no more windows, because you're in this part, that I don't like the feeling at all. And uh, so I, can only imagine what it was like. So God bless them to uh, my father. Thank you for your service. And uh, I get it, Dad. I so so um, Judy Stewart Tara 
wants to know, is Al in red too? Okay, so, Shooter. Red, white, and blue. Okay, and red, huh? red, huh? and white, and and you and your blue. Okay, That's so right. red, white, and blue. Okay. You could have done a little better, don't you think? But no. you did pretty good. Did you think about it? Of course I did. You did? Okay. Red, yeah. white, and blue. All right. Uh, I thought the other night when we were in the same intensity, that was like kind of incredible. Yeah. When you were in, I was in the, I think the green, and you were in something else. Anyway, anyway, um, it's been an honor and a privilege to be able to give back in a little way to the servicemen. And today, um, how many of you, how many of you have sons or grandsons or uh, husbands who are active, actively on duty now? We've got, we've had this ongoing war and it's been a thankless war, just like the soldiers of my generation, those of you who are baby boomers, our, our generation's war was the Vietnam War. Never was there any generation that got less kudos for the work they were doing. That, that, that uh, Vietnam War, um, none of us knew why we were there. None of us knew why our brothers were sent there. I remember when uh, I always talk about guys and dolls because that's how my only acting experience. And um, Dave Kaufman, this kid who worked on guys and dolls. And then in June, we all graduated, not like this. We actually had a graduation ceremony. And um, we all said goodbye and we hugged and we kissed. And you know, when you do a high school musical, uh, there's, there's a camaraderie that's hard to describe, that's like unlike anything that uh, any professional experience will ever give you. And um, I remember saying goodbye to Dave Kaufman, who then was drafted, because uh, my friends were drafted at that time. And that's the last time I ever saw him. The next time I uh, saw him was at his funeral. Uh, he came home in a body bag. For, from the Vietnam War. That was a lousy war. That was the war that they introduced chemicals, napalm, terrible, terrible. Every war, every, every war. Yeah, war, you know that, that every term, war. war is hell? Yeah, war it is. is hell. Can you imagine, and um, we women uh, uh, have, we haven't sat out the wars. The women have, off, have provided so much incredible uh, work and comfort and um, skills, but um, man, the men have really taken the brunt of it up until lately when women were screaming for equality. And I was one of the ones, because I wanted to be paid equal uh, with the men, but I don't know that I wanted it to be that equal. <laughs> I do think, and I'd be interested in your feelings about it, are we supposed to be off on the battlefield? Girls, are we? I don't know. Well, there's some some countries where women serve equally with men. Well, Israel would be one. I think, yeah, Israel, and I think, uh, as I recall, it's one of the Scandinavian countries, maybe Sweden. I don't know, and uh, I don't know how that works. Um, it obviously must be working for them because you know it's working. But, but I'm asking on a like in from a loftier place. Um, we're the nurturers. We, uh, it's not that men don't do the same job, but the, the first 10 years of our lives is very mother dependent. And it's about, we are nursed by our mothers, we are nurtured by our mothers. Um, is that a good time for a mother to be missing? I don't know, I don't have the answer. I'd like your answer. I'd like any of you to tell me what you think about that. Sometimes I, I, I think about women staying home and taking care of the babies and letting the men well, do hey, do, I don't know. Is hey, that sexist? These, I'm sure it is. these days, a lot of men stay home and look after the babies. Yeah, yeah. Okay, yeah. really? Yeah, I so you know, I'm moving along slowly with the changes that are happening. Well, this started, you know, the women's movement started in the '60s, and okay, so it's only uh, 
Like, like, the, like, the 2000s. Yeah, right. It's so. like 50, 60 years. Yeah. But that's yeah. when it started. But it's changed a lot. Yeah. And no one, and no one really looks at it today as the women's movement the way they did in the 60s. There are women's organizations that advocate, yeah. uh, but in, in the 60s, uh, I, for example, <laughs> I was doing a series in Canada. Um, it was a kid show called Razzle Dazzle, and um, there, there was a female who was the producer, and we knocked off for the summer months, and when we came back in the fall, she was wearing a double-breasted man's suit. She had cut her hair like a man, and she was smoking a cigar. Okay. <laughs> and what was your immediate reaction? Her reaction? Yours. Was, oh, mine. Yeah. I, I said, you better learn how to talk with a deep voice. <laughs> well, I do think women are incredible, and I think that we're capable of anything, and I think that we can handle anything that's thrown at us. That's true. And we are hardwired to multitask. And so, um, and I guess this is all part of the changing landscape of who we are as people, as uh, sexes, etc. So, ah, uh, that breeze feels so good. Uh, yeah. Thank you, thank you. Wow. I, I don't think it's 100 anymore. No? What do you think no. it is? Well, let me check. Yeah. I just happen to have my... Uh, Neither uh, Alan or Caroline would let me put what, the uh, music on tonight. Tell me if you miss it. If so, I'll put on my, you know, I'm a, I'm a music person. It's only 91. Oh, okay. Well, for here, 91 is yeah. kind of cool. It's kind of cool. And it's going, it's going to be in the low 70s tonight. Okay. All right. All right. That's the desert. I mean, they have swings of 40 and 50 degrees from daytime to nighttime. You know who I've been watching on Facebook? I had a girlfriend like that once. <laughs> How many girlfriends have you had? Uh, only you. So that's Al lying. Only How, you. But I, since you met me, I, it's only me. They, the rest of them were just friends. I see. I must say, you're so uh, loyal and so true blue. Uh, it's really wonderful to be married to someone. Well, I, I'm the was. only I'm the only one in Hollywood still standing. What do you mean by that? In terms of the, you know standing the, the rest of the you're still you're married to the same person. No one no one has pointed a finger at me and said. Oh um, no. Yeah no. no. Well, that's because of what you said you'd do to me if I cheated on you. What do you think, girls? I said I'd do to them. <laughs> Let me put it this way. If she were to carry out what she suggested she would do to me if I cheated, uh, I, w I would be speaking like a soprano. That's true, yeah. <laughs> and you wouldn't want to keep a pair of scissors around <laughs> if I did to you. I said, yeah. I Just that I love you so much. Yeah, I know. So, you know. You know. Anyway, um, so. Um, it's, it's a special day, Memorial Day. Yep. It's going to be a different Memorial Day. Um, we have to make the best of this Memorial Day. I'm glad the churches are now opened up. And um, Are they? I thought they were still fighting. Oh, they're probably still fighting. I mean, you know, closing, closing churches, that's a violation of the First Amendment. Yeah. Free speech. Yeah. It's free speech. Yeah. And especially, I, you know, people, people who are really religious... They're totally dedicated to yeah. the religion. Yeah. And to tell them they can't, you know, while, while there are marijuana stores open and other uh, things that uh, seem to rub people the wrong way. Oh, by the way, yeah. Maureen Wiles Turtle, what a great name. <laughs> I know this is off topic, but I put my flamingo nail polish on my toes today and love it. And love is in caps, oh. a happy color. Oh, I'm so glad. Our, our, you know, our products are so great. And tonight we're going to talk about tanning, and I, I was just looking at what we're uh, presenting tonight, and do you know I used every single one of these things this morning without even realizing that's what we're using? I, I'm into our products, that's all I use, but I was in, I was washing my hair in the shower this morning, and while I washed my hair, I took the acai exfoliating polish. Uh, yeah, I did too today. Did you? Yeah. And I put it all over my face in the shower. And then, and that was after I put the conditioner on. So while the conditioner was like cooking, 
I was like getting, especially around here, getting all the, what I got out of Al the other day, um, the whiteheads. <laughs> I don't have whiteheads. So you don't have blackheads, you said? Oh, that's right, yeah. And white, no, whiteheads are just, you know, you have oily skin. That's why you have such beautiful yeah. skin. Didn't his skin look beautiful the other day, those of you who watched the show? Well, he has been blessed with the most incredible skin. He, he has very uh, little wrinkling, and not for, like, a man his age, because that always, like, puts a caveat on it. I'm saying, no, he has very little wrinkling. And you know, most people think you're 60. Yeah, you know, the thing is, I have been sitting in the sun every day for most of my life. And even when I lived in Canada, uh, on Friday afternoon, I'd jump on what was then called uh, Trans Canada Airlines. It's right. now called Air Canada. Right. And I would go anywhere south. I'd go to the Bahamas, Jamaica, Trinidad, Acapulco. It didn't matter as long as they were going south. And I would lay in the sun. What I realized was, yeah, I enjoyed laying in the sun, but what I realized was mm -hmm. I was there looking for the light because oh, yeah, in the in the northeast yeah. okay and this is common to the northeast yeah. after weeks and weeks when it's overcast and dreary and gray uh you everyone craves some sunshine and uh, when i was living in canada as a young boy we would wait until the sun started shining usually sometime in april and we take off our storm windows which each window must have weighed 100 pounds and we'd pull out our clothes. Things we didn't have in California. That's right. Yeah. We'd, we'd pull out our, our warm weather clothes. And if you had a convertible, you'd put the top down. I bet you had a convertible. Well, I was really, I was too young to oh, drive. Okay. And then the biggest snowstorm of the season that would hit. Would happen it always that. happened. Yeah. It always happened. When I, the first time I ever saw Alan in his car. All right, remember? Was yep. I, was I 19 or 20? I was pretty young. And, um, no, the first, no, I didn't, no, I didn't see you in your car until after we had had one date. And then you flew back to Los Angeles. Then you flew, you drove up to San Francisco. Yep. And he pulls up in front of my house. And he's got a 1958. 65. Okay. I'm not good with numbers. 65. Cadillac convertible. One of those, remember, remember those cars that you date a guy because of his car? Um, I know it's shallow, but we, we women used to date a guy for their car. It was, it, it looked like the Titanic. It was so big to me. And I didn't know anybody in San Bruno who had a Cadillac. My, um, my cousin Roy, who uh, was married to my favorite second cousin Betty, who's also my godmother, he had a pink and white Buick that had that kind of thing. Um, but it wasn't a Cadillac, but the pink and white Buick was incredible. Then my cousin Roy, who was an adult, uh, but probably in his 20s, but he seemed like an old guy to me, uh, he then got an outdoor motorboat <laughs> with the outdoor motor on it, and it was painted a, a hot pink and white, just like his Car. Buick. Wow. And so the the Buick had this design and he painted the same design on his boat. So when he'd pull around town in the pink and white Buick and behind it was the pink and white boat, oh my gosh, it was incredible. So Alan drives up in front of my house and what year was that, Alan? I think it was 1968. Okay, 68. And this two-tone green it wasn't two-tone it wasn't no the, the cadillac was green and the top was black oh huh i remember it being two-tone but anyway it was the most beautiful cadillac convertible i'd ever seen and the top was down and there he was with the sunglasses and the arm on the 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 windowsill and i already was all in but man that was like wow you wowed me, Al. Well, thank you. You wowed me, too, and that's why we're together. Mm. By the way, Victoria Pleskoke Rafferty said, did Al ever smoke? That may be the reason he has a beautiful complexion. Well, I'll tell you a little story yeah. about that. Did he smoke? From the time I was 8 until I was 12, and don't ask me why I did this. I still don't know the reason why. I used to have money to buy 
No, but but I, what eight-year-old buys cigarettes? I would pick you. I would I would pick cigarette butts off the street. What eight-year-old is hanging out at a pool hall? Okay. Just yeah. Saying. Just saying. Okay. Well, yeah. those were different days. Yeah. I um, I, I pick cigarette butts off the street. And that, it lasted four years, so I picked up thousands of cigarette butts. Uh -huh. And a friend of ours, in, who's a doctor in uh, Boynton Beach, Florida, uh, drew some blood to do some blood testing. And Dr. He's, Dip Maharaj, yeah, and he who said, happens to be oh, that's right. one of the featured doctors in my latest oh, yeah, book, yeah. A New Way to Age. He's an incredible doctor. Incredible doctor. He beats, incredible. He, he, he beats or manages cancer by uh, improving the the immune system, amazing. Yeah. So anyway, so we did the blood thing and he said to me, uh, you have the most white blood cells I've ever seen. He said, I'm not talking about somebody your age. He said, anybody, he said, yeah. what have you been doing? So I, I told him what I did and he says, no, that's not it. And I remember two days later and I called him back and I said, for four years I smoked cigarette butts off the street. And he said, that's it. I have antibodies. <laughs> I have antibodies that protect me from everything except toxic people. <laughs> well, you know, um, one of the things that's the ongoing discussion with, with our quarantining right now, and nobody seems to come up with the answer, but that uh, our immune system develops by interacting with right. other humans. Isn't it called the herd, H-E-R-D? Yeah, yeah. Yeah. And so w one of the arguments that's coming up right now, that by locking ourselves up, uh, we are uh, actually negatively affecting our immune system. It, I don't know who's right or who's wrong. It, that goes along with my kind of thinking because that was one of my first reactions of, you know, you, you keep us all away from one another and we don't pick up one another's antibodies. So that's something, that, that's another one of these ongoing discussions. The, the problem we're all having right now is who's right? Nobody knows who's right. Yeah, probably Nobody every knows. probably everybody. No, you know, yeah, then how come I can't come down there? Yeah, right. How come you can't come down here? I'm asking. How come I can't come down there? <laughs> so, so Suzanne, what? Suzanne's going to tell you what we are featuring today. What, but before you know, she does, you had a discussion about coming down. Before she does, I just want you to know. It's 30% off the entire site. The promo code is USA30, uh, SuzanneSummers.com. So. Did you two have that conversation? Because I wasn't uh, privy to that. Which one? Why Caroline can't come down here. Uh, I miss you so much. Well, she men right. she's mentioned it before. Yeah. But it wasn't like a specific conversation we oh. had. Oh. Yeah. Oh. Yeah. Well, we should have that conversation. We've been like, avoiding it, but I'm hearing you today say, you know, if everyone's all in, so if everyone's all in, can we come down and see you guys? Yeah, I would love it. I would really love it. Let's have that discussion. Okay. Okay, because um, I think maybe, I'm not, having not been privy to it, probably because of my fractured hip, that perhaps it's because, you know, my uh, immune system might be immunocompromised right now. Might, I don't know. No, 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 I, I believe in all of that. I'm just like, if that applies to church, it applies. I, yeah. This is, this is why it's complicated. I know, I'm, very I'm being, complicated. I'm, I'm just putting out, like, point counterpoint. Yeah. Because, I, like, yes. I want to I wanna yes, put my arms around things, you. In a personal environment, we all still have a little fear about it. Yeah, yeah. So it's a very, it's a very complicated dynamic. Very. And I don't think anyone has an answer. It's, it's just, it's hard. And there's anxiety about going back to integrating again. And there's anxiety about not. So yeah. it's a very interesting time we're living in, for sure. But yeah, I, we will look back on this time. Um, there, there will be many, many books written about this time. We will look back on this time of um, uh, shock and awe. You know, they refer to 9-11 as shock and awe. I think this is shock and awe. Yeah, for sure. And I think everybody is experiencing it, and um, we're all, you know, hoping we're doing the right thing, all of us. So. Well, our family has been lucky, that's for sure. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, so far we're all negative. Okay, I, let me just go we through. Two, we had two positives in our family, but we all had mild, mild symptoms, yes. so. Yes, yeah. Yeah, that's so, which true. is interesting that two people would get it and two people wouldn't. Mm -hmm. So, 
Uh, anyway, that has I to do. Uh, you know, that must have to do with it's immune all the systems. Way through Monday, so our um, the Memorial Day sale lasts all the way through Monday. So that thirty percent off with that promo code, you guys can use it all weekend long, which is awesome. Did you hold up that the deal? What the deal is, Alan? I did. It's thirty uh, percent off the more. entire thirty percent off the entire site. Okay. The promo code is USA thirty. And it's at SuzanneSummers.com. And by the way, all of you who are uh, complaining about the white paper in front of my face, you're so right. When I saw it played back, I went, oh, God, that's like the, the show is about the white paper. Anyway, so I told you about this morning how I um, exfoliated with acai. Um, I have hardy skin. I have thick skin in many ways. <laughs> yeah, right. <laughs> But so the SIE uh, is recommended for the full body, like for your back. Alan gets like rough, he has the most beautiful skin, but the, his back gets rough from dry skin. And one of my favorite things to do is get in the shower with him and just scrub down his back. Um, we turn the steam on so there's no water, so that it's warm. And then I put the acai all over his back and leave it sit for a couple of minutes. When you leave an exfoliator, ours, um, sit for two minutes, it loosens the, um, uh, the, the beta hydroxy acids, uh, loosen the dry skin around the cells. It's like every cell's got like a, a little bridge that attaches it and, and there's the, it, it cleans, cleans them up. And I'm still, I'm, I'm still working on it to do my front. <laughs> <laughs> no, my mom told me never to do that. I'm not gonna do that. Anyway, I, he, his back, but I tell you, my arms here, I get rough skin, and I know your husband, Caroline Bruce Summers, who happens to me, my son has rough skin on his arms. Man, and those patches on the back of the arm. Yeah, on the back of the arm, and I know exactly where, where his are without even asking him, because I have the same one. This is your friend, Asai, okay? If you're going to put on the, uh, my nose is so itchy today, I'm sorry to keep scratching it. If you're going to put on the tanning lotion as part of this um, system we've set up, you really want to exfoliate. The more you exfoliate and get off the dry skin, the better your self-tanner will look. Okay, so you exfoliate, and then this is kind of uh, one of two products that started it all, this one, because I'm Irish. I, I've told you that about 12,000 times. And uh, we weren't meant to be in the sun. The, our, our skin doesn't like the sun. Our skin would like us to be under a heavy wool coat on a, on a bluff with a bunch of sheep herding them. That's what, what Irish people uh, skin wants to do and be. Um, so here I am in Southern California, because I fell in love with Alan Hamill. Uh, you know, Northern California is quite uh, chilly most of the year, but Southern California is you know, Hawaii-like weather. And you want to have a tan. If you want to wear shorts, if you want to, you know, look good in your summer clothes, you want a tan. This golden tanning serum, best I've ever used. It uh, doesn't go on orange. It makes you the color that you're supposed to be. Like, if I put it on Alan, it turns a completely different color than, than uh, when it's on me. It makes you look so, so good. And in fact, I'll show you. Can I come over there? Sure. All right. Uh, I'm going to go back and forth, and because, you know, it's it's a Facebook and we're in a pandemic, and because I don't have Caroline here who normally would. Suzanne. Yeah? I don't think you have to apologize. Okay. All this right. is, we do this, this is homemade. This is homemade. Okay. But homemade, but we're professionals. I'm yeah, a but professional it's, on camera yeah, person. Yeah, but it's, it's. And our line is professional, so I want to show you. Um, now, oops. Oh, I got to take my sound off. Oops, I just really screwed it up. Oh, it's okay. You dropped the condom. I did. It's okay. Don't worry about it. I no it. longer have a condom on. Yeah, just take it off. Okay. All right. Okay. Do I need to bring it over with me? No. All right. And then when I come over here, you can get down on bended knee. Yeah. And, and what do I do? You get down on bended knee. Yeah, and then what? And then you give me a diamond ring and say, will you be mine forever? Wow, I think I've done that already. Wow, surprise moment coming up on Facebook. Yeah, yeah. yeah. I think I okay. did that. Okay. I think you, did. you know what? You almost did it like that. You did it at okay. um, 
Uh, okay. You want to hand me the mic and I'll hold my mic over here. Okay. So I think our sound is actually worked out tonight. Just okay. uh, see, just grab that there, even though it doesn't Oops. have, as you call it, the condom. Okay, I'll just hold it up to my uh, face here. Okay. All right. So this morning, actually, not even this, not even this morning. Maybe I don't know, two hours ago, I put it all over my legs. Bye-bye, baby. Them's are nice legs. Remember your mother. Do you realize your legs look the same today as they did when you were 19 years old? <laughs> really? Well, not quite, but... No, so yes. Sweet. It's so great. You know the great thing about uh, aging is your husband's eyes go along with yours. <laughs> your light just went out. Oh. Yeah, there's, now it's back on. Okay. It's back on. So what did I do this morning? I uh, exfoliated after I did my face, then I put it all over my legs knowing we're doing this show and then I just I just put the um, tanning serum front and back and this is one coat this is one coat I mean that's pretty incredible and it doesn't stink it actually smells good it's got sea buckthorn berry in it which I bet you don't have that in your medicine cabinet and it makes you the most beautiful color and this is the color if I laid in the sun for two weeks in Hawaii that I would get and no, you wouldn't. No, I wouldn't. No, you'd no, burn. Actually, I wouldn't. I'd burn. You'd burn. And you'd, I'd get you'd... freckles all over. You can see I have freckles on my legs, but it sort of covers the freckles. And I like your freckles. <laughs> I do. You know what? I actually think you do. I do. You've said it so many times yep. over the years that I think you do. I'll tell you, for me to be able to have a tan and tan shoulders and tan legs is... Um, it just makes me feel good. I put it on my face. I do. I use the Healthy Glow mainly on my face. But when I want to get an Insta tan and really look tan like the girls who spray down on television every day, oh, I worry about them spraying down. I know what's in that stuff that they spray on you in um, uh, TV studios. It's well, they, you know, they say. I remember that you went to a tanning uh, place in Malibu years yes. ago. Yes. And uh, so I was talking to the, the the lady who was operating the salon. Uh -huh. And I said, you know, what's in this stuff, you know, that you're spraying on Suzanne? And she said, oh, it's made from sugar. So I checked into it, and it, it was made from sugar. But that's like saying that heroin is good for you because it's made from poppies. <laughs> yeah. You mean heroin is? You know, we have an organic sugar peptide in our product. Listen to Caroline. Yeah. The voice of... Uh... We have an organic sugar peptide, so I don't think the one they were using was organic. Of course not. And, and it may not have been a peptide. Right, but ours is, we have French Polynesian peptides and organic sugar peptides that are the natural tanning enhancers. Great. So, I don't know which one they were using, but ours is organic. You just know the one they were using was crap. You know that. They just wanted to get, get the job done. You know, I feel like back in my early modeling days where I never usually got the job, but it was always about holding the product up and smiling into the camera. But anyway... Uh, I see Alan's on my legs, because he likes my legs. I do. Your <laughs> legs look amazing. They do? Your legs look like a teenager. Isn't that great? Would kill through your legs. Isn't that great? Well, it's the color. It's because of this beautiful well, it's the shape too. golden tanning serum. Yeah. Yeah, I'm glad to um, be able to show you my legs again, because it's been a long year with this fractured hip, and it's all coming back now. And my walking is almost, I would say, probably at 96 out of 100. I think that's where yeah. I am. Yeah. And um, uh, the other day, I walked down the hallway towards Al, and I put on a really sexy dress and high heels. Four and a half inch Manolos. I was so excited. I was walking, I was walking like a little girl who put on her mother's shoes, but I was doing it. And I wasn't walking much different than I walked in my little sparkly silver shoes here. Can you see those? Well, uh, Kathleen Sheridan said, you can sell your products while we all get drunk. Like, they <laughs> the more we spend the money. <laughs> see, those are marketing tactics now. You're not Kathleen. <laughs> Thank you, Kathleen. Here, I'm going to go around to the other side, Al. Okay. All right. You take the microphone here okay. in our homemade movies. Okay. okay. So, uh, Mary, uh, no, Deborah Stetler from Mary Beach. 
uh, buys Casa Dragones Blanco <laughs> at the liquor store for 75 bucks. Yeah, that's a lot, but it's real good, isn't it? Yeah. Uh, the Casa Dragones people must really love us. They must be going, what's, what's all this uh, craziness? Can you go over here and pick up the little powder puff? Put it underneath the glass. Oh, you, it'll the be glass. better for you. What, what would you like me to do? You know, you have the little, do I need the little, the little powder puff on this? The, the powder little, puff? The thing that, that uh, blocks the wind, you know, the little... Oh, the little... Uh, spongy thing? No, it should be okay because oh. there's no wind. All right. And then this healthy glow, this is moisturizing lotion with tanning serum in it and... You know, when you don't want to go as dark as this on your face, you want a healthy glow. Uh, this is your healthy glow. I love this product and I use this all year long as one of my favorite moisturizers. So that's part of the, the package today. And then one of the products that started it all, the Wild Orange Vanilla Body Lotion. So after you're all tanned up and it's all cooked in, I, I, if you're putting on your tanning lotion, your serum at night I would just let that be and you know what I did it um, well last week I put it on and you know I woke up I just changed the sheets and it didn't get on the sheets well I'm glad um, you changed the sheets <laughs> he doesn't like when I change the sheets because you don't need to change the sheets I don't want to change the sheets no because I I grew up without changing the sheets you didn't well in my uh, little mauve purple bedroom and my mauve bed and my mauve blanket. Do you think my mother wanted a girl? I think your mother wanted you. Yeah. Your mother loved you. Yeah. Man, did your mother love you. And yeah. You loved your mother. I, yeah. I uh, always say, you know, to my granddaughters, when you're looking for a man, look for a, 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 a boy, a guy. Now they don't date boys, they date guys who loves their mother. I know my mother loved me yeah. because after I was, uh, after I flunked twice in school, once in grade school and once in high school, and I was expelled twice in high school in my first year, mm -hmm. uh, she took me home. She uh, leaned me over the ironing board, which was in the kitchen. She pulled my pants down <laughs> and she took the ironing cord <laughs> and let me have it. Now, I think. Did and you I, deserve it? Uh, yeah, I did. Caroline, do you think he deserved it? I, I, I don't know. Imagine. Imagine. No, no, I deserved Alan it. As a little boy. No, no, I deserved it. Okay. I deserved I'm it. I'm telling I, you, he deserved it. I was a bad boy. I was, you know. <laughs> no, you weren't a bad boy. You were just. I was mischievous. Very. And they weren't, you know, they didn't like mis They didn't know, like mischief. We didn't. We, uh, my generation didn't come from ink wells. But he is just that much older than me to where they actually had ink wells, and he actually did put the girls' braids in the ink wells. And Sheila. Sheila. No, no. He remembers the girl he did it to. Yeah, the, the other thing, I mean, I would do things. I wouldn't hurt anybody, no. okay? No, I didn't. remember the teacher was writing on the blackboard, and I had a piece of chalk on my desk, and I picked it up and I threw it at the blackboard, and the teacher turned around and she knew it was me, and she said, would you mind telling me why you did that? And I said, you forgot to dot the I. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, that was a visit to the principal's office. Yeah, I would imagine. Yeah. I would imagine. No, you know what? It's a whole different deal. I mean, if they did to kids today what they did to me, a Gibby, a Gibby and me, we'd get the His strap. Best friend was we'd, Gibby. Yeah, we'd get the strap every day. Yeah. Okay? Yeah. And the guy who gave Everybody us this. turned out, though. Yeah, well, it turned they, out you've got uh, great morals and ethics and a uh, great uh, work ethic. Um, that's one of, like, you're a worker. I, well, I never want to stop working. I love working. Yeah. And a lot of my friends, people I grew up with working, who have retired, uh, it, it's not good news. No. You know, I think when you work every day, uh, there's a part of your brain that's like a muscle. And when you stop working and, you know, you play golf or tennis or hang out or whatever you're going to do, I think the muscle gets a little flabby. Although, do you think, I think if you, if you stop working and just sit in front of the TV all day, but I think if you uh, play golf or tennis, like all the people down here in the desert, all the uh, retired people yep. who, um, man, are they in good health. I mean, well, we're talking, we're talking about a group of people who are our friends, yeah. 
who played like tennis. tennis Washington? Yeah, he, tennis he, every he's day. He's older than you. He's what, 85? I don't and, no, uh, I think he. I think he's almost. He's about the same age, maybe 83, 84. All right. Yeah. He 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 gets up in the morning and plays tennis until he's dripping with sweat. Yeah. Same thing about Greg Ranker. Yeah. Dripping with sweat. All these men yeah. down there. So I think you're right. You're well. You're right about our group. Yeah. But then there are. I'm not going to mention any names. Yeah. But you know who these people are, yeah. and they stop working, and uh, you know some of them were big time producers, and there's something that happens. Yeah. You know, it's yeah. they get. I think I think their testosterone levels drop, their estrogen levels. I'm talking about men now. Their estrogen levels increase. Their voices, you know, get up here like that, and I think uh, they lose that thing that guys have, whatever that is, you know? so great. I love that thing that guys have. Yeah. We I've always really enjoyed men, and men have treated me badly in business, and I still really, really enjoy well, them. Well, not just in business. Suzanne. Yeah? Um, you have several friends who are worried that you need more ice. I do. Thank you, girls, or guys, whoever okay. I do. Load it up to the top with ice, please. Like, thank you very much. You're right. It was starting to taste warm. And, and also, means... I want to mention, um, I know you use the Healthy Glow on your face. Uh -huh. I use the Healthy Glow instead of the tanning serum. On your I legs? Use the healthy glow. Well, I use it on everything because I just use that as lotion mm. because it's it goes on so easily. So the tanning easy. app, you're just hidden in there. And it doesn't and streak or anything. There's no streaking, and I can't believe how... Like, I, I really have a very sun-kissed look right now, and it's you so look easy great to put right on, now. so I, I really love it for that. I've been using it for the last few weeks because it's been so nice out by the pool. Well, I've seen uh, uh, you sitting by the pool, and you, you look particularly touching these days. Oh, thank you. You're in a good place. Several people have asked what you're drinking. Oh, okay, yes. Casa I don't need any more. Yeah. A bit. A bit. Yeah, a little. I'll top it off. Okay, okay enough, enough, okay. enough. Enough. Um, I was talking to someone today about alcoholism because you know my, my father had a terrible alcohol problem. People in my family had such an alcohol problem that I thought when I was growing up that the reason you died was you got cirrhosis of the liver. I just figured you, you grow up, you live for a while, you get cirrhosis and then you die and then you have a funeral and everybody whispers the word cirrhosis. That's just, I figured the way Everybody in my family was going to die. I didn't know that it was from like destroying their livers with too much alcohol. I never uh, drank alcohol to take pain away, even in the times of my life of great emotional pain. It was never, I spent money I didn't have. I wrote about that in Keeping Secrets, but I never drank or used drugs or anything like that. I'm so glad, man, am I glad that I didn't do any of that because it would have been so easy. For those of you who are my age, you know, in the 70s, it was not a stigma. You know, everybody was, uh, well, what drugs were they doing in the 70s, Alan? They were doing acid. Oh, I never would have done that. Which I never tried. Well, I'm so glad I never tried And that, uh, they were smoking a really bad weed. Well, you, you gave me that pot brownie on our first date. Yeah, so? <laughs> <laughs> yeah, so? Was that to have your way with me? Yes. And you did. And it worked. I know. Yeah. You read all about it in Keeping Secrets. <laughs> Keeping Secrets is a book that just keeps on keeping on. I do want to mention my most recent book. I'm so proud of this book. I love this book. And someone said to me right before we came on air, you know what I love about this book? I can go right to where I'm particularly interested. You know, if I want to know about the thyroid or I want to know about hormones or I want to know about what's the latest and greatest new thing. So anyway, there's a lot to learn in here. And don't you... Don't try. Just read a little bit at a time. It's a lot to absorb. Just, yeah. You know. You know what it is? It's a, you know, like there's an audio version of the book, but we didn't do it. The publisher, say, yeah, the publisher, the yeah. publisher did it, which was fine. Oh yeah, they did it without me. They did it. No, well they invited. They no, they me. they asked you, but. What I said to them was, you know, this isn't a novel. This is a reference book. Mm -hmm. This is filled with incredible information. You're right, girls. And, with more ice. And, the, and the reality is when you're reading something that applies to you vis-a-vis -vis your health, you want to put a sticky, a sticker, yeah, a little, 
Yeah, exactly. Yeah. You can't do that right. with an audio book. So if you just want to listen generally to what's you know going on, etc., it'd be fine. To listen to it in the car. But the, the reason that's really the reason we didn't do it. It's it's a great reference book. It's something. Yeah. You know, it's something you will look at over and over and keep going back and rereading it. But when I think about the comments of the people who bought the audio book, that isn't me. It's a Broadway actress. I don't even know who it is. Um, it made me wish that we had done it. It's a pain in the ass to um, uh, uh, read a book on for audio. Ugh. Yeah. Uh, the, especially well, the last about one. The, thyroid. the last book, the last audio book you did, <laughs> I was sitting with the audio guy in the yeah. control room, yeah. and you were sitting in the studio on a stool, and you had a microphone in front of you, and yeah. you were reading, you were reading the book. Yeah. You were, you know, and all of a sudden there was silence, and I looked up, <laughs> and you had fallen asleep. I had. I bored yeah. myself to sleep reading my own book. Yeah, yeah. I, I can't even remember what book it was. I, I uh, gosh, it's such a privilege to write books. I never plan to do it. You know, life is a journey you can't plan. If you just go with the flow, with, um, listen to the voices in your head. That, that voice is the smartest part of us. Is that our higher self? Is it intuition? Is it God? Is it, what is it? All I know is the more I listen to the voice in my head, the better choices I make about everything, everything. That's my voice you're listening to. Oh, okay. by the way, where would I be without you? Uh, you know where. <laughs> Linda Miller said you have a supplement safe for hair and nail growth. Do we ever? Oh, it's called yeah. Hair, Skin, Nails, and it, today it's thirty percent off. Yeah. Here's the deal. Oh, it's awesome. Here's the deal: thirty percent off, site wide. Promo code USA thirty. SuzanneSummers dot com. Pardon? Come show them your hair. My hair. Now, this is 83 year old hair. Okay. And he was starting to get a little thin on top. He started taking hair, skin, and nails. And yowza. Look at look yeah. at look at look at this hair. Look at yeah. that hair. Your glasses actually look really cute with my dress. But yeah. but look at that. It's thick and it's full and it's ooh, you're just so cute. I'm her act. No, okay. you're you're my yeah. Have you seen my toes with, uh, what is that, what's oh, that color? Oh, cornflower blue. Cornflower blue. Oh, how can we, how can we, oh gosh, right his here. feet look so cute. No, you got to go over there. Where? They can't, like, go well, over there. I can't show them your feet from here. How am you I going to do that? What, are you going to stand on the bar? No, here. Oh, okay. Oh, now I want you to see his feet. Okay. Both toes are done now. I did them, and I think I did a stellar you did. job. <laughs> Aren't they cute? And it's, it's on the other toes. Uh, he was sold on tinsel. That's that silver, like a silver ornament. He loved tinsel. But then when I put cornflower blue on him, yeah. and doesn't it go with red, white, <laughs> and, and blue? blue? God bless America. Hmm. Oh, don't, yeah. Okay. Yes. I want to talk a little bit more about Memorial Day, and I want any of you to uh, talk to me about um, your dads, your brothers. I want to thank my brother Danny Mahoney for his service. I want to thank all the men in my family who were in the service. I want to thank all the men in my family who were policemen, and all the men in my family who were firemen. My, uh, when I was growing up, my uh, cousin, uh, uh, Donnie Dennehy was the police chief of San Francisco, and my um, other cousin was the, uh, no, no, Donnie was the fire fire chief, and my um, other Donna. cousin was the police chief. Uh, my grandfather, my grandfather was a cop, and he, he had the night beat in San Francisco, and um, he used to see this little kid, Nicodemus, who was always sitting on the curb waiting for his mom all, all hours of the night because his mother was a prostitute and little Nicodemus would sit on the, the, the curb and waiting for his mom, poor little guy. And so one night my grandfather, Mike Mahoney, uh, who was a cop, brought him home because you could do things like that then and you wouldn't you know, get arrested for kidnapping and put him in bed with my dad and his name was Nicodemus, and Nicodemus never left. And um, 
I always love that story that, you know, you never know when you're saving a person's life. So, so anyway, well, we... Yeah. Wow. Wow. So, you know, what I'd like to say, as an immigrant to this country, God bless America. And what I would like to say about our freedoms, uh, I want to thank all those in the service, um, past, present, and future. Thank you so much. Uh, as you look around the globe, everybody wants to come to America. Everybody wants to live this life of freedom that we live here. We've taken it for granted. Uh, we're kind of on shaky ground right now. Don't let them uh, take away what America is. America is the greatest yep. idea yep. there ever was. And God bless America. And yeah. God bless all of you. Yeah. And thank you all for coming. I'll see you Monday night, same place. Big no, Al what? Yeah. What, Caroline? Wednesday. Oh, right. We're not doing it Wednesday because of Memorial Day. No, we're not doing it Monday. Yeah. Yeah, that, yeah we're not doing it Monday. little dyslexic thing going on here. <laughs> Can you believe me on the couch with the trying to get that deal? It's because okay. the nuns. The nuns made me write with my left hand rather than my right hand. All right. Thank you all. all right, Happy you Memorial Day. I love you, Caroline. I can't Take wait care. to see you. Soon. Soon. Okay. All right. All right. Love you. Bye. Bye-bye.